Hey, everybody, and welcome to another amazing episode of the Power of Women in Insurance podcast. Remember that you can see us, you can listen to us on any of our um, Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, any of those. You can also go to YouTube, see us in person, but we would love to be able to have you join us today as we are talking to an industry expert, Melinda Krieger with, uh, she's a CPCU, CIC. She's got so many initials after her name. I'm so excited to bring her on it talk to you guys. She's actually with Hanover and Melinda. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us today. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Good morning. Good Great morning. Very excited. Well, you and I have kind of met on LinkedIn. I've yep. been super excited to be able to uh, to see the things that you're doing on there, the, the activities that you're doing. Tell me a little bit about you, your insurance background, and how, how you got over to Hanover. Absolutely. Um, well, like many people, I walked into the insurance industry unintentionally, right. but that um, after a few years that it, it became much more intentional. So I think my journey is a little different than some in that most of my career has been with one carrier. Uh, and that's about 36 years of my career. Uh, I've been fortunate enough and enjoyed working in the Hanover Insurance Group. So, um, and I think that's one of the things I would say as a point of encouragement uh, to people that are new in the industry today is I think it's very uh, popular or maybe sometimes we think we have to move around often mm. to advance our career. But I would say, you know, food for thought is that it, it is possible I think, to do a, a variety of things if you find a place that you love, right? So don't think that you have to necessarily shift to a different organization uh, to be able to still enjoy the things that you love. So that that's one thing or takeaway I would have at this point in my journey. So, so, so did you throughout, you said you've been in the industry for 36 years. So as you came into working with Hanover and having your, your life in the insurance industry, have you, have you changed positions? How have you grown? Like you're saying without necessarily having to change companies, how have you been able to, to grow in your career without having to be able to go change companies? That's a great question. And um, I would say that, first of all, I had a lot of great people around me that encouraged me. So I was mm. very, when I came into the industry, actually 18. Okay. Um, so I was able to, first of all, the company supported me going and uh, acquiring my bachelor's degree. Uh, they have supported my CPCU endeavor and my CIC. So there was support for the education component, which I think is, is very important. And then, you know, I, I enjoyed working in an environment where all parts of the carrier side were kind of under one house at that time. So you had commercial lines, personal lines, the claims organization, the accounting part of the organization, the marketing was all under one roof. Okay. And so able to learn the business it from the ground up. And Hanover, I'll, I'll just back up and say, we only work with independent agency channel. So all my experience has been focused uh, on the independent agency side. And the way I was able to advance my career was that I was able to try different things uh, within the same, under the same umbrella. So, it, you know, let's just say that I was working in the marketing area. And I interacted naturally with people in the claims organization. And, you know, I always have a kind of a knack for op the operations side of things and moving things forward, right? So I don't know where that fits in the area of strengths and skills, moving <laughs> things. Um, but, you know, a person who would see something and always be trying to put the puzzle together about how can we improve this process, right? And uh, so that, you know, gave me exposure to people mm -hmm. who would say, Melinda would be able to help us with that. Let's give her an opportunity. So that, you know, I really was able to transition into the claims organization 
again at a pretty early age, 24, 25, uh, in a low level management supervisory role at that point in time. So you know, I love it, though, because you you took your your strengths, like you said, being very operationally driven and you you spoke up about them. You you offered I'm, I'm assuming you offered solutions in areas where maybe you weren't necessarily asked, but you you saw outside the box. And by doing that, people were able to see your strengths. Is that is that kind of the way that that happened? Or did people come to you asking specifically for operational assistance um, for, for you to be able to kind of grow in that position? I think both ways. You know, I think some of it was just because we were naturally uh, together, um, you know, very different today. I think in the corporate carrier environment, things are a little more siloed than they were at that time. There was more, uh, you know, if you use the term around the water cooler or more interaction just on a day-to-day basis. And, you know, we were kind of all approaching the the business together. Um, Not that we don't today, but it's just a a very different day-to-day exposure to other parts of the operation. And um, so I think that was that was part of it. And then you asking, you know, you made a great point. I think we always have to ask for what we want to be involved in. I, I think it's a little bit of a misnomer to think that people are going to carry you along in your career journey. Um, I think you have to ask for it and you have to be willing to be told no, you know, sometimes many times, but but don't quit. Right. Mm-hmm. I continue to look for people who can help you. And, uh, you know, that's that's very important. And- so I love the fact that you also mentioned look for people that can help you, because <laughs> like you said, we're not. um we're not just individual beasts. We're part of a community. We're part of a business. We're part of a, of a group of people pushing a business forward and moving forward an industry forward, a, 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 the technology of a company forward, whatever it is that we happen to be involved in. And it takes that community. It takes that group of people working together. So uh, did you seek out mentors in the, in the, in the space, people to be able to learn from, to be able to, to learn a little bit more outside, maybe even your, your specific box? Um, I was always fortunate that I did have a few mentors. Uh, I think that the time and place was a little different in that um, I wasn't really, you know, coached to seek out a mentor per se, but uh, I naturally gravitated to people who would assist me and move me forward. So they actually were mentors. Uh, it, it just didn't have that uh, tag, if you will. Right. In time, well, it was. You know, I think sometimes to, to label somebody as a mentor is kind of scary because, <laughs> you know, number one, it, it, people don't see themselves maybe as a mentor. So if we label them as such, they might recoil from it or they might they might step back from it and maybe not be as open and honest with us. Whereas if we just look back over our lives, I think we we have so many people in our lives that do step up, that do offer support and guidance. And it might be just for a season of our life. It might be for a very right. small, it might even be like for two conversations, right? Just they, they, they mentioned something that put a fire underneath us that put us in a certain direction, right? They created them to be able to be that mentor. So uh, for all the listeners out there, I just really want to be able to make sure that sometimes it's not always about labeling somebody or being a part of a mentor program, wherever it is that you're working, they can easily be somebody in your, in your life that you just have lunch with on a, you know, on a, on a somewhat regular basis. It just, you talk about things with, and they, they, they fire up your soul and they get you maybe thinking in a different direction, or maybe they talk to you about something that you're not as exposed to. And that is a great mentor type situation. Um, Cause sometimes labeling something as a mentor sometimes can be a little scary on both sides. Absolutely. And I've been fortunate. Um, I have a group of women that I actually, we went to high school together. Oh, nice. Uh, there uh, were seven women in the group, uh, six now, unfortunately one passed away, but they have, we've always been um, mentors to each other. Um, two, one is a 
business owner. They're both outside the insurance industry, but both, you know, all of us, uh, very strong willed, um, (laughs) women that are working and we've always encouraged each other. And so I think it doesn't have to necessarily come from within the industry you're working in. It is another takeaway from that. It can be other people in your community, school community. I am, I did take a short break uh, when my daughter was in second grade. So I have one daughter. And um, so I was able to take about five years away from the corporate environment and work with my husband in his small business. But I uh, I worked on the PTA board. That might have been harder uh, than anything I've done on the insurance industry side. But, you know, I think, you know, just being involved community, networking, those are always passions of mine. And so I think that 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 kind of flows over into everything that I do. Mm, mm. I love that. I love that. And you have been able to merge your 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 passions both personally and professionally through doing what it is that you do. So I'm sure that that has helped you to be able to 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 feel very very successful and very happy in your career. Absolutely. Well, and it, you know, it took me a long time to understand that while you, there is time you're at work and there's time you're not at work, but it's all my life. It's one life. Yeah. Um, little, you know, I, I think I used to try to say, okay, well now I'm at work and now I'm not at work. Well, it's just, it's my life. Right. And I think you have to figure out how to give the appropriate time to each part of your life. And you mentioned it earlier, there are different seasons, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, um, I'm in the fourth quarter of my career. So I'm in the finish well portion. And, you know, that's a whole nother adjustment, right? I mean, so I've, I've spent a lot of time and energy um, seeking working, making, pushing things forward. And now um, when you get to this, the fourth quarter, you're, you're thinking about how do I finish well? Mm. So that I, my focus is today is, is to continue to, to work well and to finish well. well. I love that. I love that because I think that we don't see life sometimes as seasons. We don't see them as the fact that the season will pass. Right. We think of, um, you know, I, 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 and I know that it, 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 I know it bothers young mothers whenever um, somebody walks up and go, oh, man, I would go back in a heartbeat. Right. Or or whenever people are like, um, oh, this won't last very long, because especially when people have like young children, they feel like, oh, my gosh, this will never end or whatever mm-hmm. some days, you know, but it does end. And it does just like with the concept of being able to be wherever you are in your career. Wherever you are, that time, that season will pass, right? Whether or not we're taking a class, we're working on a certification, maybe we're learning um, about a new section of business that we're working in. Maybe it's that we're in a new relationship. Maybe it's that our children are teenagers. Maybe it's that, you know, um, maybe, you know, an illness even, you know, usually that not always. I mean, sometimes that could be a long standing type situation, but even then sometimes it changes within the elements. I think being able to um, keep ourselves focused on the fact of where we're going and what we're looking to be able to achieve, um, as well as being in the moment, as well as really loving, not being too, not being too far off, right? Not being too tomorrow-ish, but really loving the moment, as well as knowing that this moment will pass. There's a balance there, I think, that women sometimes have a hard time with. People have a hard time with. We get so wrapped up in the drama maybe or the the struggle of a certain season in our life that sometimes we think it'll just never end. Oh yes. That that's a that's a great point. And I think that, you know, for me, uh you I think you mentioned on one of your podcasts that you had uh, participated in the culture index. Yes. Uh I did that recently too. And of course I've done a variety of those in the past, but one of the things that I took away from that was your, your energy, was it your energy quotient? And mine is like in the 40s. So like my energy quotient is off the charts, which I didn't need really a culture index to tell me. 
live it every day, right? So I think one of the things I've had to wrestle with the most is that while it's appropriate to have high energy and um, level of urgency, mm. you have to figure out where that's appropriate to apply it, right? Because you can't apply that level of energy and urgency to everything. There are different priority levels and and that you can still be, you know, in the fourth quarter of my career, I, I should be able to apply that much more uh, appropriately than maybe I was in the first quarter of my career. Do you find that you become more patient, less patient, more focused, less focused as time has gone on? Uh, I think less, more focused for sure, uh, or more intentional. Oh, that's about a good word. Okay. Where I, I need to focus my energy, right? So, I mean, there are some things that, you know, just by virtue of experience, you can complete those more quickly or comfortably right. with a little preparation. You know, I do believe that we need still a lot of preparation. And, I, you know, I'm a lifelong learner. I still need to love to learn. But I think in today's environment, there's so much information that you have to even be really intentional about what you're absorbing, right? I mean, I love podcasts. That was one of the reasons I was so excited about talking to you because I listen to them all the time. Yeah. I, um, and then I had to even say, you know what? I can only listen to and read so much, right? I mean, some of it I have to stop and, and then be able to apply or give yourself time to process and absorb. So mm -hmm. to your question, I think I'm better able to focus, but it's it's quite an adjustment because sometimes it makes me feel like I'm being lazy. Mm. It's sounds. Um, it, it's not being lazy, but it's not the pace at which I'm used to running. You know, I'm a big fan of Brene Brown and I don't know if you know who she is and, but mm -hmm. she's a, you know, um, social worker um, and has a great podcast and she has great books and all that. And I remember one, um, I think it was a podcast. I can't remember exactly what it was. I've listened to so many things of hers, um, but she also brings her sisters in on her podcast. And I know that they went through, um, I think it was when she did the gifts of imperfection, her 10 year or, or anniversary of the gifts of imperfection. And I did a podcast on that book specifically with Monica Edwani on this podcast. Cause I love that book so much. And I felt like it brought so much value, but one of the things that she talks about is letting yourself know that it's okay to not always be 110% productive at every single moment that sometimes we are being productive just in a different way than maybe productivity looks like in our own mind that we, yeah. Um, you know, to take 30 minutes and go watch TV or go read a book or go do those things rejuvenates us to such a level that it is progress. It is good for us, but we think of it as not. And she had a really good point that really stuck out to me because I work from home a lot um, because we have mainly a virtual agency. We do have locations, but I work from home a lot. Um, that sometimes like I don't take a lunch. I'll start at 6 a.m. working and I don't get done. My husband gets home like at 5 30. He gets off work at 4 30. Sometimes he'll get home at 5 30. He's like, okay. And he'll wait till like 6, 6 15. And he's like, okay, you need to be done because he knows, you know, and he'll call me sometimes and say, Have you been drinking your water? Did you get up and get lunch? And even though I'm home, I don't get up out of this chair, you know. And um, it's really interesting. Because she even said that sometimes when she's just overwhelmed, she'll go and she'll sit down and watch TV, like some brainless show for like 30 minutes. And she's like, if my family walks in or if I hear the garage door go up right in my house, all of a sudden I reach up for the remote and I'm trying to turn off the TV. And somehow this sense of guilt comes over us that we're not pushing, pushing, pushing. And I think even when we're reading or even when we do continuing ed, I know that um, I'm working on my CIC and the concept of taking off multiple days for the class and then a couple days to be able to study, this feels gluttonous to me, but it, it's good for my career and it's good for my business. And we as women 
struggle with that. And there's a guilt around it. Like you said, it almost looks like I'm feeling lazier. I feel like I'm not doing something I should be doing. And we should break that stigma somehow. And um, so we're going to, we're going to put it right here right now. If you want to go relax for 30 minutes, whoever it is is listening out there, we totally 100% support that. So I love that you bring that up, that, that it does take um, time to rest and maybe even just refocus and think about things differently. Yes. No. And it's, um, I listen to John, John Maxwell a lot. Mm -hmm. And one of the talks about is, you know, it's not just experience that's important, but it's evaluated experience. Mm -hmm. I like that. Your experience, you have to have some thinking time. Mm -hmm. Time away from, you know, answering emails, looking at texts, having a bunch of notifications, all of that. You know, you have to respond to things because if, if you're working in a, in a people or in a business, service business, financial services, people uh, need you to respond to them. But you also have to understand that everything is not within a five second timeline. I mean, it, it's really not right. I always say to myself, I'm not curing cancer right here where I sit. I mean, yes. I love what I do. We're protecting our community. That's the thing that I've always loved about working with independent uh -huh. who just happen to be selling insurance is they're taking care of their community, regardless of how that looks, right? Their community could be the United States of America. It could be uh, Albany, Georgia. It could be, you know, uh, in, defined in a variety of ways, but each one of them is individually, you know, I have to, craft individual responses based on those individual business needs, which is the fun part of the business, I believe. Uh, but it's, but you have to figure out kind of how to protect your energy kind of goes back to that. Right. I mean, I'm not very good for anyone. If I am, my gas tank is empty. Mm. It's so true. And I think when our gas tank is empty, it's not only that we're not good to anyone, sometimes we're bad for people too. I mean, I know for me, I'll get angry or I get snippy or I don't make good decisions, you know? Um, and I think if we find ourselves tired and exhausted and um, maybe we are a little bit more reactionary, I'm going to use that word reactionary. It could be, you know, maybe that we give somebody too much, right? We let them take away more than we should because the concept that we're just exhausted we don't want to sit around and argue about who's going to do that proposal i'll just do it just 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 stop talking i'll just get it done right and then sometimes it's that we get angry and frustrated you know um i think i think knowing ourselves and watching like you said that time of self-reflection even at the end of our day just to be able to say where am i emotionally and even if it's like during lunch right just taking a lunch and closing your, your door to your office or something like that. And just um, sometimes I'll meditate during lunch, not a lot, because uh, I don't take lunch very often, but um, you know, which is a big problem I have. But the concept of being able to just take a little bit of time and think about not just the things that we did today, but how did we feel about today? Yeah. I think that's really important. And that's something I need. I'm just sitting here thinking that's something I need to add in because I'm, I'm really working on self-care this year. That's my big thing is self-care because I'm not very good about it. And um, uh, a lot of, a lot of things I'm not good about as far as self-care goes. So I'm, and that, but that's something I'm, I'm going to sit here and write down right now, because I want to be able to make sure that I add that in is taking time to just stop and reflect on my day. Well, and I, um, I heard something yesterday that, that probably falls into what you're talking about. And that's, uh, it was Tim Ferriss. And just talking about, you know, making sure you have realistic or small expectations. So if, if your self-care is, if you're not very good at taking lunch, maybe you just, if you take lunch one day this week, then that's good. Don't, don't say it has to be five days, right? Because maybe that's too much to ask for in your first or second week. Maybe you, you know, just think about it in small chunks, which is, I mean, we've heard that advice a bazillion times from a, a bazillion different people, right? But I think because you're very focused, you have a lot of things going on. So you probably, if I had to guess, 
you'd be <laughs> me and then you're trying to go big. Let's go big. All right. So I need to, uh, I'm going to make this change and I'm going to be finished with it in like four weeks. Well, I'm, I'm kind of setting myself up for uh, it, not a, a good result. Right. Yeah. So you just start with a, a few little things. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I go into full operation mode and I'm like put together a flow chart, you know, kind of thing. And I'm like, how are we going to get from point A to point B, you know, in our operational process, but that's not what I need to be doing. Some days it's just stop and, and, and listen, you know, and, and do one thing at a time. Right. I'm trying to drink more water. So I've got my, my handy dandy little hydro flask over here, you know, so, um, you know, um, trying to keep myself drinking a lot more water. Um, I tend to gravitate towards diet Dr. Peppers. That's my jam, but I'm trying to get away from a little bit more of that, but small little changes, even if it's just taking time to reflect on our day, going outside, maybe walk, <clears throat> getting some, you know, vitamin D, some good yeah. energy, some good fresh air. Um, even if it's just stepping up and maybe asking for, advice from somebody within the organization that we work with. How can I do better? That's a great question to be able to ask and or asking to be on a team, maybe whenever a new team is being formed, you know, getting outside of our comfort level a little bit and doing things that help to be able to push us forward. I think any change that we make has positive side effects, if you will. Um, you know, even if that doesn't necessarily put us where we feel like we need to go down the road, right? Like I may not be, you know, vice president of whatever company that I want to be able to be, you know, vice president of, but being able to get on a new committee or be a part of a new program, or just to be able to be open to mentoring somebody <clears throat> or talking to maybe a new team member that's joined us, that all those things can propel us forward to where we get the experience and, or maybe just make a connection that will help us to be able to get somewhere else. I, I love just like what you're saying that the small, small things that help us to be able to, to grow and to move forward. Absolutely. And I, I love connecting and that's, you know, kind of where I am transitioning to in my fourth quarter. The other piece is, um, you know, we have a, a mentoring program that's more formal within our organization. So participating in that uh, with some early in career people. Um, I love that. I just love making connections and, and talking because sometimes, I mean, people need a safe place to have a conversation about things that they might be struggling with that are, you know, more career oriented that they might not necessarily be comfortable asking their, you know, direct manager, uh, and they just want to bounce it off someone, you know, I don't, I don't even think it, this is the formal program we have, but I think even informally, right. And I don't know what you call this skill, but maybe it's in intuition, emotional intelligence, but like, I feel like I have a knack for if I'm talking with someone for a short period of time, I, I see them, mm. right. I see you. And maybe I hear a couple of things that you're not saying, but, but I see them and then I'm able to say, can we talk about those things? Right. And sometimes that's all a person needs to have a conversation because we do in call it corporate America, call it uh, the way we work in the U S you know, it's, it's almost like it is weakness to ask for help sometimes. Mm. Uh, if that's still true or if that's more what I experienced or grew up with in my career, but I just think that's false. And so the more that you can have conversations with other people that are a little bit ahead of you in the journey, um, I think that's a great thing. And I think mm -hmm. that's where I'm able today uh, versus trying to figure out what my next career move is. My next career move is to finish well. I love that. I love that. And your definition of finishing well is? Well, my definition of finishing well is, first of all, is uh, to be thankful for uh, the career that I've had, right? Yeah. And do that front of mind, because it has been a, a great, I've had a, a great experience. I think it's to stay um, effective. Mm-hmm. 
don't check out. Uh, you hear a lot about that today. What is yeah. it? Why? Yep. And I don't, I'm not even sure what that means exactly. I think it's well, just, isn't, it, isn't it quiet quitting kind of the old phoning it in or, you know, occupying a cube or, you know, something like that. Right. Yeah. So being, um, you know, make sure that I, I still participate mm -hmm. in at a hundred percent or whatever you, however you want to view that. And uh, just to look for opportunities to get back and use again, to use my skill set in a different way other than not necessarily me focused, but not, you know, my career is if, if an opportunity comes to me and it's something that I think I would love, I, I wouldn't certainly be opposed to looking at that, but that's not my focus is to try to find my next um, place I'm going to or thing I'm going to do. It's more about finish well where I am and those things that come to me uh, will be opportunities. I love that. I love that. And you're, you're, you're also passing it forward. You're passing it on, right? The, the, the knowledge that you have, the, the <clears throat> wisdom, the experience, the, um, the, uh, the passion for the industry without necessarily having to reinvent the wheel, right? You're, you're passing it on so that other people can maybe reinvent the wheel down the road because, you know, those things, we all know insurance, right? Things don't always move at the speed of light in the insurance industry, but, you know, they definitely do change and they've been changing at a very, very rapid pace as well. So, you know, but it is, it is kind of um, always going to be changing. You know, the industry is always going to be changing. Everything always is. And to be able to pour into that next generation of people who are going to be making those changes is really powerful. Yeah. And it's um, I, I was recently talking with uh, one of my agent partners and uh, we're, we're both in the fourth quarter of our career. But we talked about, you know, there's a lot of noise and disruption in the insurance industry right now. And I said, if I take some time to think about it, you know, we've been through harder periods. Mm -hmm. really. um, but I think that with with everything else, there's so much information today. Uh, that that escalates the situation, right? Not that there are not challenges, but from where we sit, we have had similar challenges. It just has a different face today, right? So it, it's possible, certainly a lot of hope to make it through this, whereas people that are maybe going through it for the first or second time uh, more are coming at it from a little more of a, maybe not a full on panic, but yeah, I'm panic, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when I got in the industry, <clears throat> I opened up my agency because Texas was in the black mold crisis back 20 years ago, and like we couldn't get, um, uh, we haven't been able to get, um, uh, 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 we weren't able to write uh, homeowners insurance in the state of Texas. Most insurance carriers had had left, and so therefore the concept of being able to write homeowners auto whatever. So we went independent during that time, so we'd at least have markets, right? Because my my dad was with Allstate, and so I went on out in the independent range. So we we also have to see that a lot of these challenging times in the industry create the movement forward that grow the agency as well, right? It's like you know working out or whatever. There are times you feel strong, you feel powerful, you feel great. And then you go on out there and there are days that you absolutely sucks, you know, and it is the worst thing ever. And those are usually the time that your body's growing and it's, and it's leveling up. And I think right now we're seeing that the industry is growing and it's leveling up and it's using data in a different way. It's yeah. using the information it has in a different way and it's maturing in a different way. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, I'm excited to see what that's going to look like here in the next, you know, five years. I mean, you know, when hopefully, it's usually a cycle where we have to go into a hard market, we come out of a hard market, right? So I'm ready to, I'm ready to watch that, what the, where we're going to end up at the end of that. So um, I think that'll be really, really good. But for all the people out there who experience this hard market for the first time, it's not the first hard market in the planet. And, um, you know, take time, watch the industry grow. We've talked about it, even like as we're talking about our careers, right? Looking at our careers, watching our careers, how to be able to appreciate our careers. Take that and apply it to the industry right now. Take it, watch it, apply it, love it. See it as it grows, see as it is as challenged and see where it's going to go after this because 
uh, it'll be it'll be interesting. Absolutely. I love that. I'm excited about the next um, finish well part of my career, uh, whatever that I'm hesitant to put any kind of timelines to that because I don't I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, I just like finish well. Yeah. No, I and I think you're doing a great job at it. I love the fact that you're on here. You're encouraging women. You are uh, helping others and passing along this message out there to the next generation. So I absolutely love it. Well, Melinda, if people want to reach out to you, how can they be able to connect with you so that maybe they can ask you questions or they can get maybe pick your brain about something? Absolutely. I think probably LinkedIn would be the best way. Um, you can connect with me or private message. And pretty easy to find out there that I'll be under Melinda Krieger. Uh, I'm in the Atlanta area. Perfect. With Hanover. So we want to make sure that that because it's LinkedIn, you know, that is on your um, on your LinkedIn profile. So I think that'll be a great way for people to reach on out to you. Thank you so much for your time today. I have loved getting to know you a little bit better and talking to you. Thank you for generating, uh, donating your time for us today. Thank you, Teresa. I've, I've really enjoyed it and I appreciate your time. Uh, well, thanks. Everybody, this is another amazing woman in the insurance space. As we pick her brain, get to know her a little bit better, learn about her wisdom and her time in the insurance industry. My name is Teresa Kitchens, the host here of the Power of Women in Insurance podcast. And you can check it out. We are on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We are on YouTube and anywhere that you want to listen to your favorite podcast. Go check it out. Give us a review. We'd love to hear about you and what you love about the show. Reach out to me. You can find us also on Facebook and Instagram. We would love to be able to connect with you there as well. My name is Teresa Kitchens. Everybody have a wonderful week.